Hey, welcome back to JG3 Reviews. My name is James, and today I have another fountain pen to share with you. And yes, it is another Waterman. This is the Waterman Phileas. And as you can see, this is different from the Waterman Couture that I shared with you not that long ago. This is an upmarket pen from that pen. Really nice materials with some different trim. And it is one of the favorite fountain pens of the viewer who sent these pens in to share with you. So let's flip that camera and see why he likes it so much. All right, and here we have the Waterman Phileas. And this is a 90s vintage pen and really a good looking pen. This was available in black and in this marbled green and marbled blue, red, purple too, I believe. And I think it looks good. The name Phileas, of course, comes from the root word of phileo, which is the word for love, and we usually associate that with brotherly love. For example, Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. And the design theme of the pen is Art Deco. As you can see from the trim band that goes around the back and then has just a little bit of a gap, has that Art Deco design, and then a very simple conical end at the end of this blind cap. And then as we move up to the cap, we find a spring-loaded clip that works very, very well, has the Waterman logo at the top, couple of different gold trim rings, and then you have that bullet-shaped finial. Down below the trim ring, you have the name here stamped on the band. So Waterman here and France on the other side, and that all looks nicely done. Then when you take that cap off, it does post securely. I think the balance is just fine. This is curved nicely, as I mentioned on the Couture review. That is curved nicely so that it does not bother your hand. If it happens to rest right here on your hand, it doesn't bother when you write. It doesn't come loose either. The ergonomics, I think, are quite good. Again, it is a plastic pen with that metal insert for a little bit better weight and balance, and uh, the plastic seems to be pretty good quality. I think it looks nice. It doesn't look cheap at all, and it's a it's nicely done. Then we get to that familiar grip, which is common across several Waterman pins, and it's a comfortable grip. It's large enough, and it's tapered only slightly. I, I just find that it it holds well and grips well. If you, for some reason, need a little more traction, it does have these grooves, which are column-like in their design, and it, it holds well. You're going to be able to hold that pen securely and write well, and it's not so thin that it gets annoying, or at least that's the case for me. I find it to be just fine. Then we come to the nib, and you will notice that this one is bent just slightly, and I'm not sure what the reason for that is. I've looked at other photos of other mediums, and they aren't like that, so I don't know if something happened, but it doesn't affect the operation of this particular pen, so I don't know the story, but the pen writes just fine. It is a medium, and you will notice that it has that same Art Deco motif as found on the band of the pen here on the nib. That's the same, by the way, that you see on the Couture, except that here it is two-tone and Waterman Paris and very easily read medium. And this is a really nice writing nib. It's one of the owner's favorite fountain pens, and I can see why. It just writes very nicely. All right, and then when we open up the barrel, you will see that I have my Waterman converter in here, and theirs are a bit pricier. They are really nice converters, I will say. They're nicely made, and they definitely fit inside that metal sleeve that's inside that pen. It is international standard cartridge and converter compatible, so you got options, and that's always nice. All right, for size comparison, you have, of course, the Phileas is right here, and then you have the Waterman Emblem, which has an identical barrel in terms of shape, size, and dimension, but you'll notice a much longer cap. And then you have the Majan M600, the Platinum Plaisir, the Jinhao 100, and then at this end, a Pen BBS 456, looking quite large next to these others, a Platinum 3776, and the Caveco Student. And here are the pins posted, exaggerating the difference in the lengths of these pins. And here are the pins unposted. All right, let's see why this is one of the owner's 
favorite nibs, right? So we have here the Waterman. Phileas. L was very short. And this is a medium nib. And this is Serenity Blue. Serenity now! I already see why he likes this nib so much. Really smooth. I mean, this is a really nice, there's a lot of, I don't know if you can see it, but there is a lot of nib material, tipping material on the end of that nib and really quite good. Let's do wetness right quick. Not as wet as I would have thought, but good and wet, yes. I like that. Uh, just writing nicely so far. Now, I will tell you, if you think that's loud, it's just because I'm writing directly on that plastic cover of this Rhodia pad, so that's going to exaggerate the sound of the nib. that writes really, really well. I like that. All right. So that pen just writes really well. Let's do my speed test. I don't have any doubt that this is going to do well in this test. That's just the lightest of pressure. That was me lifting while talking. I can't do this and talk. I actually think the scribble test takes more concentration away from the talking than uh, writing might do, but it just did really well. So just puts the ink down to paper and so nice and smooth. I do get, and I said it in the review of the Couture, I do get why people like these two pens and why they uh, why they do see them as definitely worth buying. Of course, this pen is the fancier of the two. They do certainly have many things in common. Uh, very, very, very similar pens, except this one has, of course, that extra weight, which affects your experience of the pen. It certainly has some very nice trim that this pen does not. Really, really nice. So it kind of becomes the difference between a Mercury Monterey and a Grand Marquis. This really is a nice looking pen and even better than that, it does write really well. And with both these pens, one of the things that struck me is just a really nice feel in hand as you write. They're nicely balanced, even though they're very different. That's where the bigger difference lies, even in the trim, once you start writing is in just the, the feel and the weight and the balance, but both very, very good. And if you can find yourself a Phileas at a good price, then, you know, maybe that's something that you might want to check out. Certainly there are some really cool looking colors and things like that, and they have a great reputation. You kind of get into a little bit of Waterman history of pens gone by, even though it's one of their more modern classics. So thank you very much to the viewer who lent this pen to be able to share with the rest of you. It is much appreciated, and I promise I will clean this up well and get this back to you ASAP. And for the rest of you, God bless. Be sure and like, share, and subscribe, and I hope you enjoy your week.